yeah, I am, I am completely wrecked. Totally wrecked. My feet are absolutely shot to pieces. I haven't taken my shoes off at all for the whole race. I dread to think what they look like. There are very few iconic must-do 100-mile races in the UK, but the Montaigne Lakeland 100 is undoubtedly one of them. So we're in kit check. Uh, these people here are checking your number and your ID, and then they'll write your number on your hand like that. And then we go and kit check. We get all the stuff in this bag checked to make sure it's right. Despite not reaching a single Wainwright peak, the race packs over 6,000 metres of elevation gain into its 105 mile route, from Coniston clockwise to Buttermere and Keswick, round Oldswater and through Ambleside before returning to Coniston. Regardless of its stellar status, attracting top runners from around the world, the Lakeland 100 has a friendly community feel about it. The cut-off times are generous, making it an accessible and achievable goal for a much greater proportion of the ultra-running community. Welcome to the 2022 Montaigne Lakeland 100. Welcome to Comestock. This was to be my first attempt at the race. Coming off the back of a good 14 week training block, I was feeling confident and hoping to get round in under 30 hours. I mean, it's only 100 miles, how hard can it be? Lakeland 100, we're in Coniston, we're going to run 105 miles all around the Lake District and coming back to Coniston hopefully in around about 30 odd hours. Climbing the first hill, I met Laura. Hi. <laughs> Laura, tell us how old you are. I am 20. And is this your first 100 miler? This is my first 100 miler, yes. But you've done what here, the kids race? I, I have done the Lakeland one when I was 14. Which is a kids race, yeah. yeah. The kids race. I've done the 50 last year in 20, well, whatever last year was. I was 19. Yeah. Um, and then I entered the 100 this year. So, and you're the, the first person to do all those three races, or at least I, start all those three races. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> hoping to be the first to finish them all. Nice one. I've done a few hundreds now, and the one thing I've learned is you can't plan for every eventuality. All you can do is train and prepare the best you can, and then hope nothing unexpected comes along to derail your race. Two hours and 18 minutes into the Lakeland 100. We are nearly 10 miles in, 15 and a half kilometers or so to the uh, race. And uh, it's fairly easy going at the moment. A couple of steep hills. It's got a bit boggy at times, but nothing too bad. But it is going to get dark fairly soon. The light feels like it's closing in already. So it'll be head torches in the not too distant future. I made it to the second checkpoint just before dark. Right, it's a little bit dark, but 23 kilometers in, uh, two hours, 36 minutes. This is checkpoint number two at, yeah, well, 23K. So what, 14 miles, 15 miles? It was incredibly humid, and I found I was drinking a huge amount of water overnight compared to normal. I often won't have anything at all for the first 10 miles or so. 
don't suppose you can uh, see all the lights down there heading up the hill 10 30 at night five hours and nine minutes in yeah 32 kilometers done just about what what's the name of this checkpoint and we're at Wasdale Head here. And I've got hot soup, which is absolutely awesome. And everyone is dressed it, as cow, cows, sheep. 101 Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians, why did I not get that? Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, well, enjoy your birthday. Thank you. <laughs> checkpoint four, we've, the year. we've made it to checkpoint four at Buttermere. Uh, this is just over a quarter of the way through and we've done it in about seven and a half, seven, four to five, seven and a half hours let's say uh, and we've had a um, milkshake, chocolate milkshake and, and I've got a hot dog as well so uh, let's get on our way with that. As the night wore on, conditions underfoot were beginning to make the going more difficult and then it started to rain. Right, we are nearly 10 hours into the Lakeland 100. It's uh, ooh, 54 kilometers in and we're having coffee. Un unfortunately, it's taking longer to get the coffee than normal because the poor lady who's doing it so tired, she can't remember what everyone's ordering. That's, this is Caroline who um, we've discovered, um, we beat her out of every aid station, but then she passes us on every downhill. Quarter past five in the morning, and we are now climbing round Blencathra, 62 kilometres in. Finally, taking the head torches off. I was running with Spencer as we hit one of the two virtual checkpoints on the course near Lonscale Fell. Spencer's just reminded me to tell you I've had a technical problem. I only have one pole because the other one won't extend. The little silver button won't pop out. It's very annoying. So we're at Blen Cathera aid station. Um, I've got my breakfast toast, which is good. Um, it's a bit too warm in here. I've been wearing uh, my, my vest the whole time and it's only now after it's been raining for four hours that I've decided to put my uh, rainproof jacket on. It's a bit stupid really, isn't it? But there we are. Um, we're at uh, 60, 68 kilometers in, 67, which is about 42 miles, something like that. I was finding it tough going, but at this point, I still believed I was on for the sub 30 hour finish. I was in good spirits, despite my rotting feet beneath me. Rainbow. We're nearly at 50 miles. My legs are my legs are really done in. Another 50 miles to go. Well, more than that, really. We've got to get to Dale, Maine, as the next aid station. We've just been to an aid station. I had some lovely soup and a cheese and pickle sandwich. So that was awesome. I'd really like to get to exactly halfway, which I think is about 83 kilometers. I'd really like to get there by 9 a.m. 9 a.m. would mean halfway in 15 hours, and in theory, still on for a sub 30 hour finish. But in reality, I knew I was slowing down despite the much easier terrain between Blen Cathra at 42 miles and Dale Main at 59 miles. So we're just coming into Dale Main now, which is uh, the start of the 50 mile race. So these guys are all doing 50 miles. Right, so this is where we get our drop bags at Dale Main. Perhaps this might have been the moment to take some time to look at my feet and try to minimise any problems for the next 45 miles. However, I just wanted to get on with it and get out of Dalemain before the 50 mile runners started their race. 
Right, that's me done at Delp. Sorry, I'm just talking to the camera. Don't. I'm not mad. <laughs> we all locked up. Who's he talking to? He's a I am done at Delmain. Uh, I've been very lucky and they've given me some milk, just plain milk, which was fantastic. I've had soup. Um, I've got my drop bag and I've got food and drinks in my drop bag. What's this feed station on the course? Um, and apparently this is the best feed station on the course. Leaving Dalemain, the sun was out and there was some great support through Pooley Bridge before we headed back up onto the trails towards Howtown, taking in the beauty of Ullswater. So at the moment we've got all the 50 runners who just started at Dalemain passing us. I thought it'd be a bit demoralising to have them all passing us, but it's, uh, it's actually quite motivating. It's making me run quicker and they all kind of look at your name on the back and they Say well done as they pass you. Well done, guys. Like that guy. Well done, mate. Cheers, Cheers guy. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. That was the. Yeah, bud. Thank you. So it's quite nice. Well so so uh, this is checkpoint nine. This is Howtown. Howtown. You're at Howtown. Howtown. About 40 miles to go. Right, we are 20 hours and 20 minutes in to the Lakeland 100. We've done 112 kilometers, which is around about ooh, 64, 65 miles, something like that. And uh, what a lovely view. We're on the biggest climb of the run. Um, I'm not sure if that's a false summit up there, but uh, it doesn't look like we're too far from the top. Cheers, guys. These are all the 50 runners coming up here. There's a scattering of 100 mile runners just making their way up the hill as well. You can tell them because they're slower. Right, this is Mardale checkpoint. Um, it is raining. We've got 45k to go. Just over a marathon left. We've got a big climb coming up now. I am absolutely shattered. Jeff Partridge is here. Hello. But yeah, my legs are really tired, my back's aching, but I'm just going to, yeah, it's always good to have a whinge on camera and then get on with it. We will get to the end, it'll be absolutely fine, but you know, you've got just to allow me to moan at you for a little bit. Between Howtown and Mardale Head, we'd run beside Horsewater and I'd found the trail extremely difficult. I ran some of this with my friend Jeff, but he was stronger and faster than me and I had to let him go. I found myself losing the mental will to keep pushing, but I went on in the rain towards Kentmere. It's raining, it's windy, but less than a marathon to go now. Kentmere checkpoint served chilli pasta and ice cold smoothies, which was absolutely superb. I'd also bumped into some friends, Laura, Jane and Joe, which gave me a little bit of a boost to keep moving forward. So that's Tra this is Troutbeck. We're on our way to Ambleside. Thank you. I met up with these two who were dragging me along. Hello! Hello! <laughs> and just as day turned into night, we made it to Ambleside. It was great seeing all the support as we ran through the town to the checkpoint. Jane and Joe were moving too quickly for me now, and they went on ahead after Ambleside. Cheers, guys! Uh, so we're in Ambleside. Hiya buddy! From here the dark trails, the intermittent rain and my overall fatigue conspired to prevent me filming anything more out en route. So this is the aid station inside Ambleside. There's, there's loads of people outside, uh, 
um, but I wanted a coffee, so I've come inside. So. On the whole, the aid stations were well stocked. I certainly managed on sandwiches, pasta and soup, and I loved the extras like the hot dogs, the smoothies and the cheese toasty I had at Tibbethwaite. Arguably, there could have been more fruit like watermelon and fewer dry biscuits. We're on 28 hours and 13 minutes, 147 kilometers. We've got about 16 miles left, 15 miles left to go. I think I'm just gonna go really slowly and just, just get it done because I'm so tired now. So this is the second last aid station on the Lakeland 100. We have 15 kilometers to go from here. Yeah, I am, I am completely wrecked, totally wrecked. My feet are absolutely shot to pieces. I haven't taken my shoes off at all for the whole race. I dread to think what they look like. It was nice to run with Jane and Joe for a little while. That was good. That spurred me along a bit and got me out of the doldrums a little bit because I was feeling sorry for myself. And we'll definitely get this run done. <laughs> run. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Probably gonna finish at about three o'clock in the morning. We've been going for 30 hours and 10 minutes now. Little did I know that the last 10 miles would take me four and a half more hours. I ran much of it with my new friend, Emily, who was finishing her fifth Lakeland 100. <laughs> Oh, what, what did you ask me to do? Oh, thank you. Right, that is the Lakeland 100 done. Honestly, that that was. It's definitely harder than the Ark. It really is. So even though it's uh, four o'clock at no, what time is it? Half past four in the morning. 25. Well, thank you very much, buddy. Thank you. Even though it's 25 in the morning, there are loads of people here cheering people in, and uh, some people I know, and it can get quite emotional. Let me tell you that. But uh, and this is so. This is where if you finish, you get your photo taken, you get your medal, and uh, people like me fall on the floor and and sleep for a long time. Right, right behind me here is where they're doing the prize giving. Really good atmosphere, lots of noise, lots of clapping. Let's enjoy it. Remember Laura, who I interviewed at the beginning? She finished in 37 hours and became the first triple crown finisher of the Lakeland 1, the Lakeland 50 and the 100. This is Emily coming up on stage to receive her slate for finishing the Lakeland 100 five times. And that was my Lakeland 100 adventure. I will be back because it's only 100 miles. How hard can it be?